Yeah, welcome to a new episode of the Java E tutorial. Today's lesson will be about Java E and database connections. I will show you how to use JDBC resources and we will create an application that is reading and writing from a database. So what you first need is a table, so uh, a schema in uh, on some database server I used the MySQL server here and I created the table under the schema in YouTube called T on the slash user and just two basic columns so you can do this yeah the glasses can connect to every database you want you just have to add the writer uh, the drivers and I will show you how to add those drivers for uh, my SQL server so all you need to do is go to your Glassfish installation path under domain, the name of your domain, then lib, I will show you here, then ext, and then you place the MySQL connector for Java, which you can download on the uh, on the MySQL website, the best is you choose platform independent, then you directly download a jar file, click download, uh, extract the jar file and place it in your folder. The then it's uh, available for your cluster server, so I will start the server and we need to connect to the Glassfish admin GUI, which is located uh, on the localhost port 4848. This looks just like this and needs time to load. So if you have nothing changed, the default password is uh, empty and you automatically get locked in, otherwise you have to enter your password you choose and then you have here under JDBC JDBC resources and JDBC connection pools so these are the two things you need I will add a new JDBC connection pool here the pool name is yeah best description for it what you want to do uh, the resource type you can choose between two ones. We will choose the connection pool data source here. Database vendor is my is oh sorry MySQL. So if you have some other uh, database, you will select the right one for you, and you just need to place the drivers in the right folder. So this is all we need to do. So you scroll down here and add some uh, connection details you can just select all these and delete them you will need the URL you will need a username which you will log into your database and you need a password so just enter those and show you how the URL has to look like this has to be JDBC my SQL slash slash local host port 3306 if you have another uh, some other uh, connection properties you have to put this in here as you configure it and then you select your schema which is YouTube for me and yeah then you just put your in username and password save this uh, by the way if your password is empty that's not good you should choose a password for your mysql server because glassfish has some problems with empty passwords so there are some workarounds on the internet but the easiest way is just putting in password in if you now click here and being succeeded and now we can move on 
and create a JDBC resource here. So I click new. As this I uh, start with JDBC, that's just a naming convention. You can choose whatever you want and call it YouTube. Pool name is our YouTube DB pool we just added, and that's all you need. Just click OK and it's finished. To your application, in your application, you need an entity for uh, your tables. So we will use JPA, which uh, stands for Java Persistence APA. And Eclipse has a nice tool to generate the uh, class, an entity, from the table we uh, have in our database. For this, we click right top, open perspective, the database development view, and we create a new view. Select MySQL or whatever server you got. Add a new driver definition. Choose your MySQL. Not sure which system I've installed. I guess it's 5.1. You remove this from here. Add a jar file. And now you just move to the location you installed the glassfish. Choose uh, wrong one. Choose the domain, the library, and then the jar file here. Click OK. Enter again the connection properties, the database you want to connect to. I save the password for later. And now you see here you are connected. You can see if you open up the schema, there are the table you have. So you can switch back to your Java EE view, click properties on your projects, switch to project facets and mark on the JPA. So the configuration are available, so you don't need to do anything here. That, no, it should be, you should be, uh, select the MySQL connection you created in the database development view, select this. The rest can stand as normal, maybe it asks you for some configuration, this is when you don't have downloaded everything, then you can uh, just say uh, configure later, because you don't need to configure anymore here, you just have to add this JPA facets here, and then you can use right click JPA tools, generate uh, entities from tables, click this, choose your connection here, select the table, or maybe you have more tables, select those you need, click next. So yeah, here are the table associations, if you have multiple tables which are connected to each other, they would be shown here, you click next. So now you switch here from none to identity, you can also select sequence for some other uh, tables, uh, database, so as the MySQL there you, you need other uh, key generators, but we will need this here, click next, we just see uh, the k table which will be mapped to a class called tuser, I will just remove the t here, an id which will be mapped to a variable called id from the type int, and username will be co uh, mapped to a string which is fine, so guess, ah, right, one step before we could uh, select the package, which mm, I select entity, I hope you can create a new one here, so now I click finish, and I have a new uh, package, it's a bit, I don't know, it's right, I just have to refresh this, and now I have my entity called user, if I open it, you see some generated things, some annotations here, which uh, map my fields to the user table, and yeah, this is all ah, right. And you also edit this to the persistence XML file, which we have to uh, which we have to extend a bit. So the first we will do is add a provider here. Provider is our 
persistence JPA persistence provider then we set the JTA data source which is the name we called our JDBC resource so this was YouTube and then we could also add some properties here how the yeah how the JPA should handle some details like caching or refreshing uh, which we don't need for this if you want to have more details about that you can just google it and this is basically all we need to do now our connection is while able we just have to call it from our beans